Hello, everybody, and welcome to Wi-Fi Now TV in association with RCR Wireless News. My name is Klaus Hepping, and I'm your host. And on the show today, we've got COO of Ruckus Wireless, Dan Rabinowitz, and we'll ask him about the secret to carry your Wi-Fi success. Join us right after this. <laughs> Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. It's great to be back in the studio doing the show again. We've been away for a couple of weeks, of course, first of all, because of the Thanksgiving holidays in the U.S. where we didn't record, and that was last week. The week before, I've, I was very busy running the Wi-Fi Now conference in Amsterdam, and I have to tell you, it was a fantastic su success. We had... Uh, 240 guests from 116 companies and 26 countries. So we're delighted about that. And uh, we had a great time there. If you missed it, here's some good news because we've made uh, all the presentations from Wi-Fi Now Amsterdam available online for purchase and download. What you can do is go to Wi-Fi Now events.com slash Europe. And if you press the big blue download button right there. Uh, you can find more information about that. It is most certainly, and I can guarantee you this, uh, the most complete compendium on the state of public Wi-Fi, public access Wi-Fi right now, and it's available to you on the website. So make sure you check that out. And also more good news, Wi-Fi Now, the conference is coming to the United States. We're actually coming to the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., this coming April uh, 19th to 21st, that's April 19th to 21st. And we haven't quite launched the website yet, but we'll do that in a couple of weeks. But if you're interested in more information, drop me a line at klaus at wifinowevents.com. And don't forget to mark your calendars. The dates are April 19th to 21st. And my guest today, I think is going to be Ruckus speaker because Ruckus is, of course, uh, part of the Wi-Fi Now Washington, D.C. conference. And that's it for my personal promotion for this week. And now on to our guest, Dan Rabinowitz of Ruckus Wireless. Welcome to Wi-Fi Now. Thank you, Klaus. Glad to be here. Great to see you. And Dan, let's get right into it. I've been obviously following what Ruckus is doing. I always follow what Ruckus is doing. You guys posted another fantastic financial result for the previous quarter. Can you tell us a bit about what Rucka Secret Sauce is for continuing to post uh, double-digit growth quarter after quarter? Well, Klaus, there's no one secret. <laughs> I wish there was, and we could just spray uh, spray that uh, that secret sauce on everything. But I think a big part of um, uh, what's making Rucka successful, first of all. Uh, if we look at the the carrier business, um, that's been growing, you know, really, uh, really well for us. And a lot of that, you know, is really based on the fact that we've invested very heavily in a virtualized controller that um, that works well with a variety of carrier infrastructure. We continue to make, um, you know, a, a very significant investment in leadership on the RF side. And that really um, is something that uh, I think all of our customers are, are valuing right now is the ability to get the best you know, performance for Wi-Fi um, in the industry from our radios. And finally, I think uh, like anything, it's, it's persistence and a kind of focus on customers and, and their experience. So, you know, I, I would say uh, what motivates people in Ruckus to actually succeed is making sure that at the end of the day, we have delighted customers. And that's, uh, that's the only thing I know uh, if you think about that, um, you'll never make a wrong decision in this. Well, you guys have an actual real following. There's not a lot of tech companies out there, uh, certainly not B2B tech companies that actually have like a following in the media and people are excited about working with Ruckus, partnering with Ruckus and so forth. Uh, take us back a little bit to what some of the things you said about virtualization. Uh, no, you you, men, you mentioned the, uh, the controller now being virtualized, if, if I caught that correctly. Mm -hmm. And you've also launched a product now, a solution now for NFV, which is, I think, a fairly a new thing in, in, in carrier Wi-Fi. Can you take us through what the benefits are? A little bit about the technical solution and what the benefits are there? 
Sure. I think, you know, the, the key point is um, we came out with a, a virtualized uh, control and management plane, um, our virtual smart zone. And that's been actually shipping in a, a significant part of our, our business for the last uh, 10, 11 months. So, you know, that actually was a, a huge undertaking from a development perspective. But what it allows for our service provider customers and also our large enterprise MSPs to do is they now can get scale in their own data center with, um, you know, with a, a, a product which is, you know, really from a, a kind of price performance perspective, very attractive. So, and, and you know, just the creation of that has given us a, an, a lead and an advantage on, on NFV and SDN because the way we look at this is once you create the right virtualized infrastructure with all the APIs that are needed to talk to a variety of, of operator or MSP uh, infrastructure, you have to kind of create from day one the ability to define um, these, uh, these, these functions virtually and also to make it possible for third parties to come in and manage our, our APs, um, you know, or take advantage of certain software defined networking capabilities. So the architecture from day one was scaled that way. And then just to finish up, um, we just announced the, the virtualization of our data plane, which was, um, you know, I, I think uh, a really novel and interesting uh, concept because normally, you know, that, uh, that traffic is locally broken out and now we have a, the ability basically to, to virtualize that as well. So this virtualization is actually happening right now with your service provider customers because one of my follow-up questions was going to be, there's obviously a lot of buzz around uh, NFV, generally speaking, not just for Wi-Fi, but the telecoms industry mm -hmm. uh, widely, right? But it, it has been happening for a while now for you guys. Yeah, I think the, I think the, um, the, uh, the readiness is there and certainly Ruckus you know, invested very early so that we could, uh, we could create infrastructure that was ready from day one. I would say that the rest of the industry is um, is catching up now in a in a meaningful way. So the exciting thing for us is as we look forward, you know, with partnerships that we've made with switching companies, for example, that um, a lot of the the investment now becomes um, something that the, that lots of companies can leverage. So it's it's a very exciting time. You know, we we're 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 thrilled about this because actually it creates new opportunities now to to scale, particularly um, you know. Because we're we're huge fans of Wi-Fi, we want to see Wi-Fi networks just take on a completely different scale and and breadth and uh, and grow. And and we have the tools now to do that. Absolutely, and so do I. That's what all of this is really about. So I support you. Um, I wanted to ask you about a little bit about I don't know if you call them use cases. It's more so the configurations of public Wi-Fi access. I mean, there are uh, you know own uh, service provider deployments, but there's also a lot going on. Also, uh, especially here in Europe, actually, a lot of renewed interest in managed services for, for public Wi-Fi access. Uh, and I would think something like virtualization also very much applies to that kind of scenario, or how do you view that? <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, um, one of the things that's particularly exciting about the uh, service provider business uh, is that you know, now we see um, that there's this kind of merging. There used to be this kind of, uh, I would say, bifurcation of people thought of service provider and enterprise is very different animals. And what we're seeing actually is that they're coming together in a very meaningful way. And, and part of that is the idea that, for example, um, you know, mobile service, uh, is, let's say multi-service operators can now get into the business of serving up uh, wireless as a service in the carpeted enterprise or in uh, the hospitality industry or public venues. So that becomes um, quite interesting because now you're talking about the ability to manage uh, very large multi-tenant networks and you know, providing the level of service that, uh, that you would expect from any carrier, but now as a, a completely managed service in the enterprise. And it's great, you know, particularly for fixed line operators who are already selling internet service to a number of these companies. That's how they get on the internet. They now have this extension that says, Hey, I can also provide you a uh, an OPEX solution, a per month cost to manage your your Wi-Fi in your in your uh, in your location as well. That is a a, a big area of growth for for Ruckus, and we we're excited about that for the industry because it's yeah very awesome. yeah absolutely. And 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 I spoke actually by the way in Amsterdam, I spoke to a number of carriers that are working down that path, and I think the there's a lot of interest around that. And and it, it's also uh, 
a growth opportunity. I mean, if it follows more or less the growth path of what we've seen for vendors like yourselves, we're looking at 15, 20% growth a year uh, for, for that as a service, right? Absolutely. And, you know, there's, there's kind of this, um, this interesting effect that happens once, once you start to get a certain amount of scale with, uh, with carriers, um, they do have the ability with their channel and their breadth to just make things grow uh, much, much more rapidly. So, you know, I have to look particularly at the fixed line operators as, uh, as, a, as a great example of, wow, if they, if they really jump into this um, with, with earnest, this is a, a massive um, revenue uh, generator for them and, and untapped business to, today. I also think so. Uh, Dan, let's talk a little bit about your acquisition strategy because you've made a few acquisitions recently and also partnerships. And uh, uh, the one from a while ago with Juniper Networks, I, I obviously still in, in effect and going on. And a new one uh, with uh, Cloud Path, maybe you can comment on. And I know, I know you've also had the partnership going on for a while with Ragapab, which is Mm -hmm. Also, more for monetization, cloud path, more on the security side. Can you comment on some of those? So let's talk first about um, uh, cloud path as an acquisition because yeah. uh, I'm particularly excited about that one. Um, cloud path is uh, is an amazing company. I feel like we uh, we just um, we found our our, uh, our soulmate um, in many ways. They really, um, I think, as a company, hit exactly the sweet spot on how to simplify and take onboarding and policy enforcement to the next level. So, you know, if you think about it, a lot of, um, a lot of the networking world has been using username and password as kind of the means to onboard devices and uh, enforce policy. And we think that's very old fashioned. And in fact, um, and I think, you know, Klaus, you know this, we, we've been huge uh, um, innovators at Hotspot 2.0, Passpoint. You know, we really believe in, in taking all the friction out of getting onto Wi-Fi networks. This is very similar. It's a certificate-based security um, and you know, policy enforcement uh, kind of approach. And so CloudPath um, has a very, very big following in the higher education market. So you can imagine every semester, university students show up with three, four devices. And you know, this is the way that the, you know, these, these large organizations can onboard lots of devices, but then associate each of those with a certain user. And, and provide a policy for each of those devices for each user. So it's a really, really cool um, uh, approach. If you look at um, uh, the device, the cert looks exactly like a Hotspot 2.0 certificate. And so that acquisition for us, um, not only is it filling a, a, a gap in our portfolio, but it's actually, I think, leapfrogging where the industry is today. So we, uh, we have really, really uh, um, big plans for, for the acquisition, and we're, we're just delighted to have the team on board. And let me just ask you a few more things about that. So is it, do you think an onboarding type technology that you've now, to, now acquired, obviously in, including the security part, which we mustn't underestimate is really important as well. Mm -hmm. That, uh, that uh, uh, feature set, if you like, or that technology, can it be extended into the enterprise market? It, or, and, and because you were talking about education and so forth. Mm -hmm. and perhaps yeah. Into the, the, the main market today is enterprise, and yeah. and we really believe that that's uh, you know that's that's really the sweet spot right now. Um, you know, the future will will uh, be announcing plans about kind of you know where the roadmap will take us over the the coming quarters. But you know, right now we feel like uh, the opportunity in the enterprise is is huge, and we really like you know everything about this um, feels like another great Ruckus product. You know, similar to our location based service. It's a, it's a leapfrogging technology. Um, the price uh, performance here is very, very attractive, and the solution just works fantastically well. We, we have you know, um, just you know, single venues that are doing 4 million authentications a day onto the CloudPath server. This is, you know, so it's just you know, very simple examples. This is a very robust and, uh, you know, and, um, and let's say, a rich uh, feature set that uh, that uh, any enterprise could take. So, so that is there is there a carrier Wi-Fi angle to that uh, acquisition story? Do you think is it going to spread into the service provider market? Or? Well, we would certainly love for it to do that, <laughs> and more on that later. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Yeah, we're definitely uh, we're definitely thinking about all of uh, all of those things. Yeah. All right. Very good. Do you want to comment a little bit on the obviously the the, the big partnership, so to speak, with Juniper? Yes. 
Uh, so Juniper and Brocade are both announced partners for us. So I'm um, definitely very excited about both of them. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the great thing about the partnership that we have with, with both Juniper and Brocade is, you know, today um, there is, I think, a, uh, an interest in, in creating uh, a tighter connection between the wired and the wireless world. <clears throat> and we, uh, we actually, um, because of our investment in NFV and SDN, we actually have the means now um, to, to very seamlessly partner with the variety of switching uh, vendors. Now these um, these companies uh, and, and us, we actually uh, are not only working on technology issues together, but more importantly, our channels and our go-to-market strategy are now, um, I think, coming together really, really well. So they're selling motion with with you know all of the sales forces to to bring each other into deals, and and I think that is a great opportunity for, for all the companies. Mm -hmm. so, you know, in in our case, we're one of the Wi-Fi vendors that could be partnering with any switching vendor. So you know, from from our perspective, we just want to do the best that we can do to be the the choice uh, for for everyone. And I think the sales force in both Brocade and Juniper are are getting excited about working with Ruckus. And frankly, so is our sales force. We're we're really happy actually that we can go into bigger deals together. Okay, so great stuff there. I I, I do need to ask you about the LTEU debate though, because we've covered yeah. it to the death actually on this show, and I'm nearly. Yeah. I have to say, I'm nearly tired of talking about it, but I kind of feel compelled now that I have Rutgers Wireless here to ask you about the EU. And we had Andrew Figueroa actually on for a couple of weeks ago, and he's doing a great job in the Wi-Fi and all that. So, so what, what do you think of it? What do you make of all of that? And where do you think it's going to end, so to speak? Yeah, so, you know, I think um, I'm, I'm kind of uh, uniquely qualified here because I, uh, I, I came from Qualcomm and, uh, and joined Ruckus and... Uh, and uh, you know, I was there for the very early days of, uh, of these discussions. So, you know, as a Wi-Fi company, we had a lot of anxiety and concern about um, bringing LTE into the unlicensed band. And and, and it's no secret that I think uh, Ruckus has been very, very active, potentially more active than any other Wi-Fi vendor, um, you know, in, in this discussion. And that's because we we fundamentally think that it's it's worth it's worth fighting for and getting the right results. So my take is this is going to happen. Um, what we really want to make sure um, at the end is that listen before talk is a requirement and the back off requirements that, that we consider to be um, essential for Wi-Fi are respected in the LTE world. And, and I have to say, you know, especially recently within the last month, I'm getting more and more confidence that the, the other players that have been promoting LTU are starting to really um, react to all the lobbying and I, I see a lot of progress there. So I think this will actually end up being um, something that is going to be uh, much less, uh, uh, let's say, an assault on, on Wi-Fi than um, originally <laughs> was feared. And particularly as things get into um, LAA and into standardization, I think there's, there's a, a general feeling that, you know, guys, you cannot do this the wrong way or you're going to have a, a revolt and a public relations problem with the entire Wi-Fi industry. So, you know, the thing, the good news is we've, we've asserted ourselves there. Now, that being said, all things being equal, Klaus, we would much rather see the LTE universe focusing on some other opportunities like the use of 3.5 gigahertz uh, in, in uh, North America. That is a huge opportunity for the industry. The FCC has given um, all of us a gigantic gift uh, in a sense, um, because there's an innovation piece of spectrum there. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's where we think the industry should be fo focusing its attention on, on LT. So. Right. Very good. I, I, I think I totally agree with you, by the way. My personal opinion, I'm totally with you on that. By the way, we, a few weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago, actually, we had David Morkin of uh, Republic Wireless on the show, and he suggested yeah. that he was going to start up something completely different, and that's Wi-Fi in the LTE bands. So we're laughing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, I think at the end of the day, you know, what's important for for us is that um, we should we should be uh, very vigilant as an industry. I mean, the Wi-Fi industry cannot let um, things just happen. We have to actually stand up, and I think the the result that we're seeing right now and the the progress is 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 directly related to the fact that people stood up and really fought. No, absolutely. And I think it's great that you guys are speaking out about these things. It can actually be very hard to find people in the Wi-Fi industry that are uh, interested in taking an active, uh, at least a publicly openly open active role, so to speak, um, 
uh, in on this issue. And I think it's important, you know, that, that companies do that. And I think you guys are doing a great job. Um, I need to ask you sort of more generally, generally about market trends. We've seen a lot of activity, of course, continue to see activity uh, among the you know, Wi-Fi rollout among the, the big cable operators, uh, not just in the U.S., by the way. I just hosted the Amsterdam conference. We had Liberty Global there, a couple of, co couple of operators from Liberty Global that are very aggressive on Wi-Fi, public access Wi-Fi. Yeah. Uh, so how do you see that? Are, are the, is it still mostly a cable operator thing, or uh, do you... Do you foresee that mobile operators will start to show more interest in this, or how do you see all that? Well, I mean, honestly, um, the the thing that is so clear is that fixed line operators really, really are committed to Wi-Fi, and and we're really committed to them. You know, because I think ultimately uh, that is that is their wireless network of choice. They are interested in pushing the uh, uh, pushing the limit now on what Wi-Fi can deliver, and they. They see a real, you know, churn reduction in in their business by providing better Wi-Fi. So there's an economic incentive. There's there's a real there's something there there, right? I mean, it's not just um, uh, a gimmick. This is actually part of their real business. So I'm 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 basically very convinced that that's not going to change. Now, whether the MNOs jump into the Wi-Fi domain, I'm personally a little skeptical because I think once you have a large investment in license spectrum, you know, there's there's less incentive. But it really depends carrier by carrier. And if you look at, um, at some carriers, for example, AT&T, they actually have a very significant investment in Wi-Fi. T-Mobile has made a, um, uh, an investment in making Wi-Fi calling really, really seamless. And you, know, and, and you could say that that's partially because they have some weakness in their macro coverage in North America. But, um, but you can also say it's a, it's a customer experience, user experience benefit. So there will be certain MNOs that really take advantage of Wi-Fi. Um, there'll be others that I think will say, hey, you know, I don't need it. All right. I'm going to ask you what you think are the biggest challenges facing uh, Wi-Fi today. I mean, one of the things that I pick up, obviously up to you to answer. I just wanted to comment. One of the things that I pick up on uh, all the time is this idea of having some sort of, maybe not a standard, but a guideline for carrier grade, because we've got anything, you know, Wi-Fi can be anything but absolutely terrible and nearly non-existent to blazingly fast. And you know, to somehow set a standard for that and hopefully push everybody uh, up a little bit in the quality hierarchy, I think would be a good one. Do you, do you have any comments? What do we really need uh, for, for some of the, these things to be fixed? Look, I mean, Klaus, one of the big things is people don't want to um, have to mess around to get on networks. So I think part of the, part of the thing that's, that's got to be, you know, become part of the DNA of carrier grade Wi-Fi is uh, getting past captive portals, getting past um, the uh, that whole um, lack of a seamless onboarding experience. So Hotspot 2.0, I think, you know, we've been talking about it a long time, but we need to have some some real, you know, I think purposeful movement over there because that just makes the user experience great. You're just on the network. You don't have to to sign in, and um, and and that's the experience that people have on cellular. So you know, we have the means to emulate that exact experience in Wi-Fi. I think the other thing is just you know a continuous investment in every part of the user experience. So you know Wi-Fi calling has to be um, really really good, and I think you know we're making investments there. I, I think close partnership between the operators and the and the uh, the vendors on on finding ways to innovate on that because that becomes a, a big part of the the picture. And then the third thing is. Um, as you said, kind of coming up with some defined, if you want to call them metrics or KPIs, that basically say, hey, this network is better than that network. And that's, you know, and, and if you can get your users onto the better network, then, you know, you want to. And um, there's some companies in the industry right now, which I, I can't uh, talk about, but let's say uh, some, some companies are really taking an active role um, more from, let's say, the, uh, uh, you know, the software and user equipment side. I want to actually follow that as well, and and we welcome it. You know, anything that pushes the limit. The next thing, obvious, is that you know we're looking now at um, the next uh, generation Wi-Fi. So, eleven uh, AX has some pretty cool features in it that are you know potentially going to up the game one more time on on Wi-Fi performance. And um, you know, so I think the next three to five years, this game is just uh, it's in constant state of evolution. Absolutely. How far are we from 
understanding more specifics about AX? So have, has there been issued details about it? I've just heard some scattered things. Well, I think for, for those of us who are working on this right now, um, there's quite a bit that's, uh, that's, you know, already gelled and formalized. Um, but there's, you know, there's still a lot of work to, to come. So, um, but yeah, I think uh, that would be a good topic for one of your, your shows. I think there's no, a point I on absolutely to order. Yeah. No, I absolutely want to do that. I, and, but I've asked a number of people and they tend to not really want to talk, about, at least until a, a couple of months ago, they didn't really want to talk about it. I think because at that time, there wasn't much, but I definitely I want in the to, next couple of months. There, there's going to be a lot, uh, a lot more that uh, can be said concretely. I mean, the the cool thing is that it looks a lot, a lot more like LTE. <laughs> you know, so you have uh, OFDMA capabilities. You have other things coming now that are um, going to be really interesting. So, oh, the mobile folks might not like that much, but anyway, <laughs> who knows? Exactly. Who knows what's going to happen? So, um, well, I think that's it. I, I really want to thank you for coming on on the show, Dan. And may, I'm going to California next week. Maybe I get the chance to meet you. I want to drop by Ruckus and see the good folks there. But it's really good to have you. And please come back and join us again uh, in a little while and tell us more, right? Love to. Thanks for having me on the, Thanks, on the show, class. Cheers. Okay, take care. Thanks. <laughs> All right, everybody, that's it for today's show. For this week's show, I've got uh, not much left to say other than I had a piece of paper here somewhere to tell you about. Yeah, next week. So next week, I'm going to be interviewing my good friend, Brian Goldberg of Teleworld Solutions. He's also actually ex of Ruckus and Time Water Cable. And we're going to be talking about the economics of cable Wi-Fi. And he's got a great little workshop lined up for us with actual real numbers on return on investment for cable Wi-Fi and uh, managed services Wi-Fi is fantastic. And uh, well, that's it. And you've got lots to look forward to next week. I want to thank Dan Rubinowitz for joining us today. And don't forget to connect to me on LinkedIn, uh, Klaus Hetting. It's easy to find and join us next week. See you then, folks. Take care. Wi-Fi Now is a production of RCR TV News. To suggest a show topic or to learn more about Wi-Fi Now events, you can reach Klaus Heading at klaus at headingconsulting.com. To find out more about Wi-Fi Now and all things wireless, visit rcrwireless.com.